Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here, and I'm in my craft studio, which I have just decorated for fall, which is super exciting. And here in the Midwest, we are starting to feel a little bit of crispness in the air, so super exciting to feel fall on its way. So I had a lot of fun making some fall projects this week, and we can start here with this cool bushel basket which I think is perfect for if you want to make something special for a neighbor or a friend. You can put muffins and apples and a cute little dish towel in there like I did. So you could do that or you could also make it just keep it at home as a cool decoration for fall. So it's a lot of fun to do some embossing and add these fun flowers. And the thing that I love about fall is it's kind of like there's no such thing as too much almost because it's like the season of the harvest and you can really layer a lot of flowers and fun stuff all over your projects. So I had a lot of fun doing that with my little Indian corn as well here. So the 3D rose is super pretty. It's a nice wow factor. And it's a brand new element that we have. And it's a little bit easier to put together than our existing rose that we have. And it's a little bit fuller too. So this little container is obviously super cute. You can put some little candies or little goodies in there. And of course, for Halloween, you can also make it look like candy corn by using yellow on the bottom here or like lime green instead. So that's going to be really fun for Halloween too. So we also have our cute little apple pie box and the top comes off and you can put some little like Whoppers or M&Ms or chocolate covered almonds. Some kind of like small flat little candy I think would be cool in there. Or you could also gift a little cute little dish towel or something to someone who would appreciate it. So that's really cute. I also had a lot of fun embellishing that. And then we've got two cards. One of them is simple and small. And you can make this a little bigger if you wanted to. But I thought it was cute small because then you can include it in your little basket or you can kind of tie it on to your little pie or whatever. So that's really cute. And of course, you can also use the maple leaf and the crow and everything separately on whatever kind of project you want to come up with too. So finally, we have our other card, which is a nice wow factor card. It actually extends all the way out. So when you set it down, it makes a really cool little scene. So it's not very hard to put together, just some little pieces that make it this nice zigzag effect. So I'm going to show you how that works here in just a minute. And the paper that I used this time, I just found at Joanne Fabrics, and it's by DCWV. It's called the Autumn Melody Stack. And it's nice and folly. It's pretty. It's one-sided, and it's definitely just fun to work with for fall. So like I always say, whatever kind of paper you want to use is going to look just as awesome, especially if it's a nice folly color palette with rich colors and earthy tones. So one more thing is that I also used stamps from Pumpkin Patch Stamps. And this is the Heirloom Traditions stamp set. And I used that for this little um, corn stalks and corduroy caption that I have here. So if you happen to have this stamp set, you can stamp perfectly on this little shape here. Or if you don't, you can always add your own different caption or different stamped sentiment. And I also use the same set here on this little sign that says autumn days are here again. So again, you can do whatever you want with that. Use something different if you want or whatever. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how this stuff goes together. So let's get started. Okay, so first let's start with our fall basket here. And I've got my pieces cut out and I actually went ahead and started to glue some of these little guys onto the bottom of the basket. So this shape here is the bottom and then you've got similar ones that are smaller. So we will set the smaller ones aside till the end because those will just go in the bottom to add some strength. So let's just go ahead and finish gluing these guys on and all I'm doing is just putting some glue on this bottom tab and then I'm gluing it onto the inside. But I find it easier to glue from this side. But whatever you're most comfortable with is perfect. So I'm just gonna make my way around and finish gluing all of these on. And for the first basket that I made, before I glued these on, I actually ran them through my 
my embossing machine. I have a Sizzix Big Shot. And I had just found a really nice wood grain embossing folder at Hobby Lobby. And the brand is Paper Studio, which I think is the Hobby Lobby brand. And that added a really nice touch. However, the embossing does make these a little bit weaker because it just kind of just weakens the paper a little bit. So I did have some of my pieces kind of tear a little bit, which is not a huge deal, but my basket is just a little more delicate because of the embossing. So now I'm taking one of these smaller shapes here and I'm just going to glue it right into the bottom in the center. And that just covers up those tabs. And then you're going to take the rest of your shapes. You should have like four or five of these. However many you want to add is fine. And just go ahead and glue those on there to add strength. So you can load it up with muffins and whatever. Okay, so now let's take a look at our large strips. What we want to do is glue this right here. And if you look really closely, you can kind of see a little corner right here and right here. It's hard to see, but that's where you want your glue to end. So we just want it on this, this end here. And just do your best to to spot those little corners and line it up. If it's off a little bit, it, it won't be the end of the world. And I would have made a score line here to make it easy to see, but then the strip would fold and we don't want that to happen. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And then we can close it up. And this brown paper that I'm using is a little bit boring, I think, on top of the, the same brown paper. So you can have fun choosing more exciting paper than I have here, but you get the idea. Okay, so now what we want to do is set this. I can see here that it's kind of shaped like this, and I want the top. The top part is bigger than the bottom part. So make sure that it's shaped like a crown, and then Go ahead and put your basket in there. And we want to raise it up enough so that each of these are not overlapping. They are just touching, but they're not overlapping. Just approximately is perfect. And then to secure it in place, we want to go around and just drop a dot of glue down underneath there and go all the way around with your glue and just secure that in place. So go ahead and make your way around with a dot of glue underneath here, securing it into place as you go and work your way all the way around. So my large band is in place and mine's actually not perfect. I've got a little gap here and here, but you know what? I think that makes it look more like a real basket, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So now let's do the same thing with our thin strips which go around the top. And we could do it the same exact way, but you know what? I am going to just glue it right on, right onto the top by putting a thin layer of glue. And the only thing you wanna do is do not put it right on the edge. You wanna overlap it in the middle so that it closes up the whole basket. So just work your way around with a thin line of glue. I think three at a time is a good, a good number to do. And again, instead of just solid colored cardstock, you can do some fun patterned paper instead, which would look cute. So the end of it kind of tapers off here, and we're going to overlap the next strip on top of this one to hide the fact that it tapers off. So go ahead and put a little glue on the top of it here, just like we've been doing, and work your way all the way around. Oops. And I'm making a mess, but that's okay. 
and just finish it off by gluing it down until you get to the end. And I've got some overlap here. What I would do is just, I'm gonna take some scissors and chop it here and then just glue it down. Okay, so finally we just have our little handles and there are not pre-cut holes for these because I didn't want it to be too hard to line it up. So what we're gonna do is kinda eyeball where we want it. And as you can see, there's this panel here in the middle and I want it to, I want the holes to be just on either side of that panel. So if you have something sharp to poke a hole with, like this tool from We Are Memory Keepers, I've had for a while, my mom got this for me, and it's used to poke a hole for a brad, but if you have something else, or if you have a little, like a thick pin or something, or the brad itself, sometimes you can use to poke through. So I'm just going to put that on. And the brad is going to show through on the other side, but it's not the end of the world, especially once you fill it up with cute stuff. Everyone's going to be looking at the cute stuff in the basket, not so much at the back side of your brad. So just loop it around and put your other brad in there. And it's cute. And just do the same thing on the other side. So the only thing to keep in mind is when you pick up your basket, these are too delicate to pick it up by, so just pick it up by the bottom, obviously. So next, let's do our cute little Indian corn here. And for the bottom, it has two pieces, and the top has two pieces. And then this goes on at the end and just wraps around the top. So I think it's fun to use some embossing on cardstock. And when I was at Hobby Lobby, I also got these nice fall leaves. It's called A2 Leaves by the Paper Studio. And it's really cute for fall. So let's take our lid. And I went ahead and I folded over all the parts that are scored. And we're just going to close it up with a nice thin line of glue. And just wrap it around, line it up, and give it a second to dry. And then we're just going to put glue on the top here and put the top in place. This little rectangle here, we'll just pop that right on top, give it a second to dry. And then the bottom goes together the same exact way. So then to put this guy on, he goes on the lid. We're just going to put glue on all four of these segments here. And just put that in place on the top. Super simple, super cute, and easy. So there's your candy corn. So now you're probably wondering how does this three-dimensional rows go together, so let's take a look at that next. Okay, so for our 3D rows, we have six pieces like this, which I've already gone ahead and started to form, and then we've got our wacky spiral thing here, which we'll do next. So first, as you can see, it's split here, so just put a dot of glue and fold one side over the other, doesn't matter which, and then while you're holding it to dry, just curve the edges over a little bit. And you could even pinch it to make it kind of like a point. Looks kind of rosy. So now we are going to put some of these bottom pieces together by putting a dot on the inside and holding this while it dries. And you want to hold it for a while, give it a nice really strong hold because it's going to want to come apart. So really hold it. And if you want to use a hot glue gun without burning your fingers, of course, that's going to give a really, really strong hold and it might be a little easier to do. 
So I've got three together like that, and I'm going to do the same thing with the remaining three. And I'm kind of like bending it away to create more space here in the middle to make room for the other petals. And just hold that and really give it a chance to take hold. And it's okay if it's messy in there because it's going to be hidden. So next we want to, if one seems a little bigger than the other, you can put the smaller one inside. And I have some 3D Zots and that would be the perfect thing to put in here or a squirt of hot glue. Or glue will work too but it might not have as good of a hold. So we'll glue those together and then we'll be ready for our crazy spiral. So what we're going to do is the same thing that we did before with each of these where we put a dot of glue on one of these either here or here, doesn't matter. Just one dot, fold it over and then bend the edge. So just do that all the way down and just keep working your way down. So go ahead and do that to the rest of these until you get to the end. So I'm almost at the end here of my gluing for this piece and you can see it's kind of a wacky thing I got going on here and I'm just doing my final little glue and fold and then what I want to do is oops, I want to start in the center here on these scallop shapes and I just want to curve them around. If you want to use a pencil in the middle or a stylus or something, you can do that. Or you can curve them like I'm doing here. I'm going to put a dot of glue to hold that in place a little bit. And I'm just working my way around. And if I see a, a flat space that would take some glue well, I will put a little dot of glue there. And just keep wrapping it around in a spiral. And I put a little too much glue in and it's coming out the side, so it's okay. You can be more careful. And now we're starting to get to the petals here. So mine is a little bit tangled up here. Let me just get this out of the way. Okay. So now my spiral is starting to encompass these folded petals that I have here. So as I continue to wrap around, I'm just putting a, a dot of glue here and there. And it's kind of difficult to tell where the pieces are going to be touching well enough to put glue. So you can actually kind of skimp on the glue at this point. Maybe just put a dot here and there where you see. And then all we're going to do is glue this into the center of our flower. So if you have some hot glue, that would be awesome. Or just regular glue, you can glop it on there. And then you're just going to need to hold it for a little while so that can really take hold. And you can kind of adjust it as necessary, maybe shove some petals down further or whatever. And then just glue that inside here. So now for our pie box, we are going to take these two pieces here, which are part of the crust, and then this circle here, which is the filling shape. And first we're going to just put glue right inside here. So we don't want to go past where that that tab is up top and just glue one onto the other and then do the same thing on the other side 
and just wrap it around and put it in place. Now as that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and bend over all these tabs, which I'm just going to put glue on all of them, and then I'm going to put my filling circle right on top. So you can take your time more than I am going to right now, because I just want you to get the general idea, but it takes a little a little time to be careful and put it along the edge, but not put too much, not put too little. So you just want a nice thin line of glue very close to the edge, and then a dot on each one is nice also. But yours can be more precise. Okay, so now I'm going to take my filling and I'm going to put it just right smack on the top. And as it's starting to take hold, I can adjust it a little bit. I'm going to flip it over and just adjust it some more. And the edge is going to be covered up by the edge of the pie, so you don't have to be very particular about it. You can just do your best and that's totally fine. Okay, so now the larger liner piece gets glued inside to cover that up, make it look nice. And we can set that aside because next we want to take this part of our crust here and then I've got two sets of strips that when you lay them out, you can see the circular shape around them. There's two sets like this. So what we want to do, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. We can just go ahead and just do one little dot because it doesn't need to be, doesn't need to like withstand a hurricane or anything. And you might need to lift it up to slide something underneath. It's possible. So just one little dot here and space it out about the same width, like the space here is about the same width as the strip itself. So just do your best to line that up, but if it's a little bit off I think it looks even more cute and homemade, so don't worry about being perfect. So go ahead and put all of these just from one set in place. And then as you probably guessed, we're going to take the other set of strips and weave them through these strips that we glued on here. So you can really start anywhere. I'm going to lay these out again so I know what I've got. And I feel like starting with the largest one in the center. And I'm just going to put one little dot of glue underneath the end of it. And then it's already going over here, so I want to go under the next one, and then over and under and over and then I can glue it. So you can go ahead and do that to the other, the rest of the strips to finish up the top of your pie here. And then we're going to glue it on by putting a thin, 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 thin layer of glue right on the edge, the very, very edge, and then just put this in place. Then all you have to do is take your little leaves here and give them a little curve and just glue those all the way around. Maybe lay them out first so you know how far apart to space them and then glue those down so that it looks like this. Then for the bottom of your pie, it's the same as the top without all the crust details. So you can do that the same way. So now let's move on to our Colorful Trees card. So now for our super cool Colorful Trees card, 
I've got this shape here, which looks like this, and I've folded it like this. And then I've got this next piece here that's folded this way. And then I've got these two pieces like this. So first what we want to do is put a line of glue down this tab and glue that to your background piece. And then glue your background down to your orange piece or whatever your, your background is. So I can glue that right here, flush with the bottom. And next, we can put some glue on this side and glue that right here. And then I've just got these two panels here, one which goes right here and one which goes here. And you can use different kinds of patterns to jazz it up a little bit. And that's your card. So then you just want to add your trees to the front of each of these panels. And it's nice and three-dimensional. So there you have it. Super fun fall project. Super exciting. I've been waiting all summer for fall to start creeping in. So I hope you're as excited as I am. And if you make any of these projects, as always, I would love to see pictures on our Facebook wall or in our forum or on your blog. You can share a link on our Facebook wall. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.